Hello there, and welcome to Daniel's Infinite Playlist, and welcome to the classic album review section, where we basically take a look back on the albums that have been released in the past. And as you can see from my share today, we're actually going to review the excellent second album from, uh, b uh, from the band Espen and the Witch which is called Washing the Sins, Not Only the Face. And for those of you who don't know who Espen and the Witch are, well, Espen and the Witch are a trio that um, have made themselves known, especially in the indie world, with their sweeping, uh, very, how do you say, uh, melancholic, but also very mysterious, uh, gothic, indebted uh, sound. I mean, that's, that's how they made themselves famous in the first place. Um, they garnered huge su success with their first album, Violet Cries, which was even produced by uh, an amazing producer called uh, Rodade MacDonald. I don't remember, I don't know if that's the way that you should say the name, but anyways, um, they even got signed to this huge label called Matador. And during the whole success of their first album, Violet Cries, uh, they um, went swiftly and recorded the second album, which was the follow-up, um, uh, which is the one that I'm reviewing right now. And uh, for that album, they wanted, wanted a warm, uh, sort of like, bigger sound than the debut album had. However, how is it to listen to this album? Well, it's a bit like this. Alright, I'm going to show you the CD unboxing right now. Here's the album cover. It's just very minimalist and very mm, sweeping. I think it's uh, it shows kind of like the mysterious nature of the band. And here's the uh, behind. Uh, and then the inside, the CD is here, which is, um, which says something like, uh, I mean, which has a quote that says how long uh, do you mean to be content? Which is a quote from one of the final songs of the album. Um, and here's the booklet, which has a, a pictures of the band members, you know, like in the same style as the cover. Um, there you see, and also lyrics, which I'm always grateful to read. And then you see here, and then some credits on the behind. All right. How is this album musically? Well, musically, this album is very much a gothic rock album. It houses the uh, the most uh, excellent atmosphere that makes you feel all of these wintry ch uh, chills in your spine. But um, more than a rock album, it is also very much an electronic album. It uses uh, all of these uh, electronic swirls and sounds and uh, synths to, uh, you know, just aid like the sort of like sparkly and shimmering nature of this album. And it's just so beautifully produced and they uh, actually used the help of a producer to actually do this album as with the first album as well. And um, the producer, I think, contributed to the to the album's more electronic sound, which I really, really am a fan of. I really love it when when bands just uh, like to fuse different moods together. And I think um, the music is just beautiful. It can go from hard crushingly, you know, like rough and marching, like in the song Iceland Spar, but then it can go, you know, it just tumultuous and utterly, what do you say, utterly dramatic on the song Death Waltz, which is one of the album highlights. So yeah, how is this album lyrically? Well, lyrically, this album is a sort of semi-concept album, which narrates a, a person's journey from beginning to end. And, um, uh, according to what I've read, you know, like online, because the band has actually done, you know, like hefty um, explanations on, you know, like the different uh, themes behind this album and especially also the meanings behind the song titles, which I really appreciate a lot. And apparently the journey, um, 
the journey is about a person who meets uh, their doppelganger and at the end of the journey the doppelganger sort of like confronts uh, confronts them and um, you should totally listen to this album to just uh, uncover just what the album means but uh, what i love a lot is about the lyric names is that they they allude to something uh, literary, something that exists, something that the band has found, you know, like in reality as an inspiration to just, how do you say, to hook this uh, story further. For example, like in the song Iceland Spar, which is named after the stone that Vikings used to use uh, in order to navigate, which is called Sunstone or something like that. And then there's the song um, when that head splits, which actually takes inspiration from uh, Salvador Dali, and then there are songs that take inspiration from Albert Camus and also Vladimir uh, Nabokov. Even the song, "Wash the," I mean, even the album title "Wash the Sins," not only the face is a it's an ancient Greek palindrome that the band just uh, stumbled upon when they were creating this album, and I think. Um, the album also has, a, I mean, it, it carries its themes, uh, literary themes, uh, with, uh, how do you say, with the bravado. And you should totally listen to it deeper because it has a, um, it has a beautiful, beautiful theme that uh, you should totally go explore. And um, yeah, all right, what do I give this album? Well, I give it an 8 out of 10. It is a strong second album, and I think it is even better than the debut, and it perhaps, just perhaps, is the best thing that the band has ever done. I mean, after this album, they released like three albums uh, with a newer sound and um, through their own record label, which is called Nostromo Records. However, this, I think, is the best one because it encapsulates like a lot of the things that Espen and the Witch are using the literary references, the gothic drama and the just beautiful and heartbreaking you know like sounds it's, it's just so sweeping and dreamlike and the concepts are also very fully fledged and it's just so beautiful however uh, what kind of drags down the album is actually the second half like the first uh, I'd say Six songs or something like that. They are very strong. They're like wow. This is just amazing But then it's just sort of like fizzles out. I mean don't get me wrong. They're still great like um, if you're listening if you're listening, you know like with a uh, like actively you actually find you know like the um, uh, narrative semblance of this song is uh, of these songs are very important however the sonic how do you say the sonic ex experimentation kind of like ends there and it just keeps on this ambient and harsh rock uh, sound so i so for this album to have been you know just a teensy bit bit more perfect um it would have had with a, a lot more variation perhaps a little bit more exploration on the so on the you know on the sound that death death waltz or slow wave were b building up upon and yeah but otherwise it is a very very beautiful album and i think that it was very harshly critiqued upon its release i mean don't get me wrong it still got good reviews but a lot of pe a lot of the critics around then were kind of like oh well i mean <laughs> But that's just so, yeah, uh, but when I just first bought it, I was just completely entranced by the sounds and, and everything. I thought it was beautiful and I still think it is. I think, still think it is an album that uh, stands strongly to this day as one of the better, you know, like gothic albums released in the, you know, 2010s. So yeah, please make sure to listen to this one because it's really, really good. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this review. As always, I'm going to put the artist links down below. Espen and the Witch are available everywhere, so just go on listening. And there are vinyl versions and there are um, CD versions as well that you can get actually very cheaply. And there's even a remix, sort of like companion album. However, I I just I don't like it quite, but you know it's it's okay. It's sort of like a bonus. 
anyways um yeah thank you so much for watching and if you like this video then please give a like and subscribe i'll be reviewing new albums every wednesday and classic albums every saturday so yeah keep your eyes peeled for those <laughs> all right enjoy music enjoy life people we see us hello <laughs>